Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of The Negro's Worst Enemy, Part 1. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that this video is not a propaganda or entertainment video. It is for educational, informational and reference purposes only. Please look for the referenced sources and study them yourself. Remember, it is lawful to fire upon runaway Negroes who are armed and upon those who, when pursued, refuse to surrender. William Wall, 1849, and it is from the book The Narrative of William W. Brown, an American slave, published 1849, and from Moses Grandy in 1844. My name is Moses Grandy. I was born in Camden County, North Carolina. I believe I am 56 years old. Slaves seldom know exactly how old they are. Neither they nor their masters set down the time of a birth. The slave because they are not allowed to write or read, and the masters because they only care to know what slaves belong to them. And this is from the book Narrative of the Life of Moses Grandy formerly a slave in the United States of America and published 1844. Do you just believe whatever you hear without examining it closely? Do you just believe anything you hear just for the sake of it? Because the slave master said faith cometh by hearing as coded in 2 Corinthians 5.17. But what and what have you ever heard from the slave master that you examined closely before you believed it. When John F. Kennedy said, forgive your enemies, but never forget their names, what does that mean to you? So, who is the enemy? When enemy is mentioned, it is always easy to think it must be a human being or some individual somewhere. But did the slave masters not say it is the devil? So, what about the media? For example, during the Biafra genocide of 1967-70, to 70, the BBC was the biggest enemy of the Biafrans in addition to the owner, which is the British government and incidentally, the British Empire was the biggest slave trading empire in the world. And so, if the BBC could be an enemy, it means an enemy can be either animate or inanimate, and as such, during the slave trade, the enemies were the slave hunters and their religions. But today, what and who could be the enemy? Identifying the enemy. When Malcolm X said, only a fool would let his enemy teach his children, did you take time to understand what this means? Do you somehow believe that the enemy will just teach the children everything visibly evil or possibly half-truths or outright lies where teaching happens just as enemies can be animate or inanimate the teacher can also be animate or inanimate for example a billboard can be an enemy because of what is displayed there but then it's inanimate but somebody is hiding behind it but then teaching and teachers could be the media the school the church, the market, etc. And all places where the teaching happens, you may by now be wondering how all these could be the enemies, the devil and the god code. If the slave hunters raided, hunted and captured the Negroes, clearly it shows that their god is the Negroes devil and the Negroes devil is their god. And so, who is really the enemy? Who is really the God? And who is the devil? The one on whose alleged behest our forebears were massacred and slaughtered mercilessly. Could that be the God or the enemy? And what about the slave master's government? The slave master's government is symbolically God, while the Negro's government is symbolically devil. And since no one has ever seen either God or devil before, the actions and inactions of the proponents should be a guide 
to all of us to determine which one is which. And you probably may have heard about the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the American so-called Declaration of Independence. And so, we reference the Declaration of Independence, 1776, and this was published 1911. And here, we see that in Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the cause of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. And please remember Biafra and Ambazonia here, and remember also that the same people you are hearing this from, while they did not free the Negroes after this independence, are the same people supporting and sponsoring the wars against the Negroes in Biafra and Ambazonia today. And it goes further to say, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness and this is our interest. But going forward it says that to secure these rights governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Note this very well that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. And our question to you is, why do you think the Negroes were not freed from slavery? when this independence was achieved and that's because the negroes were not considered human which is the same thing they are doing today if you notice the same british that left the eu nobody bombed them nobody killed them for doing so are the ones sponsoring their slave hunting partners the fulanese in biafra and in ambazonia in cameroon and in nigeria today to be killing innocent people simply because they want freedom if you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research and put it in the comment section that this is what you found. Then, looking at where it said that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Now we ask you again, why did these same people bring their false golden calves of Islam and Christianity to the Negroes. Remember, those religions were imposed. But we are being told here that those rights include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So how come the same people came to claim that the Negroes were worshipping devil if that was their own happiness or where they found their own happiness? So we see clearly the hypocrisy of the slave master which you can see a clear image of today in Biafra and in Ambazonia. And they went on to conclude by saying, We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do, in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, Note, these colonies, remember, Biafra and Ambazonia today are supposedly in their own houses, but the slave master, mainly the British and other European slave exporting countries are there, working through their slave hunting partners against them. So we want you to look at the hypocrisy in tandem with these declarations, and it goes further to say, and of right ought to be free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown. Remember, the whole cause of Biafra and Ambazonia is the British insist that they must remain slaves. That's all you're seeing. 
You don't need to believe us. We will prove it to you. And if you were to study the historical records, you will find out that all they did was when the slave trade ended in the new world, so to say, they exported it in the name of colonialism. That's all they are doing. So when you see them sponsoring wars there, they are sponsoring their slave hunting partners against the Negroes. And it goes further to say, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence we mutually pledge to each other our lives our fortunes and our sacred honor then you have a long list most of them we understand are supposedly masons or belong to the shriners but then do you see anyone burning their shrines or destroying their own shrines or pursuit of happiness but they came to negro land to stop the negroes from their own understanding or pursuit of their own happiness which they are doing till today and never forget that they did not free the Negroes after they got this independence because they considered the Negroes as not being human at that time. But leaving that aside, we see that Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin were among the people that signed this and John Adams. Going forward, let us reference an appeal to Pharaoh, the Negro problem and its radical solution by Khalil McKinley and this was published 1889 and here we see that when the war between the states ended in 1865 Negro slavery disappeared from the North American continent. Our interest is for you to observe that the Declaration of Independence was in 1776. All men were allegedly created equal but then it was not until 1865 that the Negroes got freedom and the freedom is actually in quotes but again you notice that there was actually no plan for that if not for Abraham Lincoln and his determination to actually end the slave trade but he goes further to say the victors and the vanquished in the struggle alike congratulated themselves that their long-standing cause of quarrel had disappeared with it, that the coming years contained no prospect of a renewal of the old controversies, and that their children would grow up together, the joint heirs of a union, more peaceful, more powerful, and more perfect than themselves or their fathers had ever known. Certainly, most of us cherished the hope, the belief, when the first flush of triumph or the first can pang of defeat had given place to sober reflection concerning the future of our common country that the only obstacle to the cordial union of the peoples of the long divided and lately warring sections had been removed at last and that they would go forward thenceforth whatever but our interest is the negro problem here was not actually solved it was clearly remodeled and for a better perspective, let us reference the slave trade overruled for the salvation of Africa by William Tate and this was published 1852 and here we are told that fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, kindred of every name gathered round each successive group as they arrived. Remember these were those rescued and being returned. We shall look at that in closer detail but our interest is to show you how the voice may be that of Jacob and the body is that of Esau. And it goes further to say and the questions of breathless wonder. Whence have you come? Who sent you back? Who rescued you from the hands of the white man? were asked with rapidity which made reply for a time impossible please remember that these things are not very accurate they were just shipped back in random they did not come back to where they originally belonged so if you notice it will look like they were brought back from where they were sold which is not correct because 
all the places where they were stolen from were usually destroyed. And it goes further to say, and when at length the exiles were able to answer that the English had delivered them from their oppressors. Remember, the same English were the biggest slave traders of all time. So you see how it is the voice of Jacob, but the body of Esau. And also why the devil had to speak through the snake. Understand this, it's very simple, but it's highly coded. And it goes further to say, the English had delivered them from their oppressors, had fed, clothed, and cared for them as a father for his children, and had now restored them to the land of their nativity. Ransomless and free, the people of Abiokuta lifted up their hands in amazement. The English, they exclaimed, are a people living nearer to God than any people on the face of the earth. You see, the same English that was behind their enslavement is the same one that is also supposedly behind their freedom. You see how subtle the slave master is. You see him playing the same game in Biafra and in Ambazonia today through his slave hunting partners, mainly the Fulanese. And it goes further to say, and this feeling is not momentary, but abiding. Every fresh arrival of exiles giving it a fresh impulse. Mr. Thomas King says Mr. Crowther with three other Christian teachers have lately joined us. Mr. King's mother and Mr. Baba's aged father have since embraced their long lost children with tears of joy. Remember they are trying to paint a picture of how they returned the slaves that were captured or saved from the British cruisers after the world cried out against what the British were doing. Now, don't get this mixed up. The old people were murdered at that time. They were not allowed to live because of perceived witchcraft. It was believed that if they captured only the slaves and left their parents living, they were going to attack them with witchcraft. Understand this, you don't need to believe us, you just need to research it. Our interest is for you to use Biafra and Ambazonia today to know who the British are. It goes further to say, several other immigrants have returned in the same vessel with them and rejoined their bereaved relatives. This is a lie, because if they burnt down the houses and killed the elderly, how could they have come back to their original people? Remember, part of what you learn from this video is the fact that it wasn't the Negroes that were selling themselves and it was not actually a sell but it was a military expedition. Those armies you see were the slave hunting terror groups. And further down it says, the ships of war are regarded by the people of Abeokuta as their protection. They receive accounts of our success against the slavers with joy. Remember the slave master gave everyone the impression that it was the people selling themselves. But here we are saying that they were happy with the end of the slave trade. And above all, remember they also claimed that the Negroes had no attachments to their siblings. As in, the mother could have a child and give them to you because the Negroes were considered to be like cattle. You have to understand that the slave master is a subtle beast. He has enough lies to deceive everyone else with. And he goes further to say, nor is this all. These exiles did not return alone or empty-handed, but took with them the missionary and the Bible, and both for the sake of those who brought them found favor in the eyes of their countrymen. The Bible was the white man's book, the missionary was the white man's minister, and the missionary was the white man's minister, and the white man, as they simply expressed it, had liberated slaves for the love of God. You see how they converted the Negroes to their golden calves of Christianity and Islam. Remember the Muslims did exactly the same thing. And what is happening in Ambazonia and Biafra today is your proof. It goes further here to say, nay, they would become our subjects if we would accept their fealty. Or that the Queen of England would take our country is a sentiment often expressed by them. Under her rule, we know that we should be peaceful and happy. Remember, they have no idea who the slave hunters were. There were no radios, there were no TV, there were no news media. All they knew was that the white people were the ones capturing them. 
and Arabs were also considered white at that time, including the Fulanese, the fairer type were also considered white. So you understand how smart and how sort of the slave master is. So you see how he came back from behind to now start buying the favor of the Negroes and see how he plays out here. And he goes further here to say, and the Yorubas are only one of many tribes whose exiled children our colony contains. Remember that Yoruba was coined by the British and the Fulanese. Nobody was known as a Yoruba or Yareba as it was originally before 1808. You need to bear that in mind. These were names they concocted. But our interest is to show you why the devil spoke through the serpent in that code and why Esau supposedly or allegedly stole the brother's birthright. The voice may be Jacob's but the body is Esau's. Their example, moreover, has stimulated those yet left behind and as Africa is gradually opened by the cessation of the slave trade, other tribes will return, each to his own fatherland. This is a lie. Remember, like we told you, they destroy the houses, they destroy the community entirely, they burn it down. So there is no way anybody could have returned. That's why if you were to research it, you will see that when the British captured the slave ships, they were returned to Sierra Leone to a place called Freetown. Not to wherever they came from because they don't carry people from the same community in the same ship, which common sense tells us is so that they can't communicate because of language barriers and mutiny. So that's why they carry people of different languages together. So ask yourself how they could have returned them from 10 or 20 or 30 different communities. Is it from Bonche Island? The British had a slave facility in Bonche Island. And it goes further to say, and still as they go, they will tell of England's mercy. Still as they go, they will create the same impression on her behalf till the white man and his religion is welcomed through the whole interior of Africa. So you see how they sold their religion. It's not that the religion was supposed to do anything. It was just accepted by some in return for the favor they believed England did. Whereas England were the biggest slave trading empires in the world. They were the biggest slave hunters as well. But because the people didn't know, they had a different opinion and view about them. You will see what we mean here. You see that the name of the Englishman Crowder assures me is already through the African continent becoming the simple passport of safety. Remember, they will tell you that the people were killing the white people and eating them, whereas they were killing them because they thought they were slave hunters. You see how smart the slave master plays? You will see the same game being played by the BBC in Biafra and in Ambazonia today. And you see here it says, if a white missionary visits a black tribe, they ask only one question. Does he belong to the people who liberated our children from slavery? If it is so, he is welcomed, and his message is welcomed for his sake. I will mention a most striking and instructive proof of this. An American missionary not long since, being desirous of commencing his labors among a black tribe 30 miles from Abiokuta, earnestly bespoke Mr. Crowder's interest on his behalf. Remember, while the Ibas are actually Negroes, there are many Fulanese, people from Dahomey, in what you call southwestern Nigeria today. That place was conquered. The same way you saw the slave master remove southern Cameroon from the old eastern region. And he is trying to do it to what he calls south-south today. That's exactly his technique. It doesn't change. We shall look at that in a subsequent video. Our interest is to show you that the slave master is only as smart as the Negroes have chosen to remain foolish. That's all and gullible. The request was willingly acceded to, but there was a serious difficulty in the way. The searching inquiry, is he an Englishman, was immediately made by the chief. I knew not, said Mr. Crowder, what to do. I could not say that he was, and to have stated that he was an American would have closed the door against him. Remember, at that time, the people knew the Americans as the slavers, but they forgot that it was the British that shipped the slaves to the Americas, and there were Englishmen in the colonies overseeing the slave trade in the Americas. Understand how smart the slave master plays. That's why the devil had to speak through a snake. Also, Part of the code of the voice being that of Jacob 
and the body being that of Esau. You see how it is the voice of the British, it is the voice of the English that is behind the slave trade, but the body of the slave trade is that of the Americas. Just understand it for what it is. Meanwhile, they are not Native Americans. The Native Americans were not part of it. It is still the same Europeans that were involved in the slave trade that immigrated to the Americas. And see the lie that Crowder told here. And so he said he had English blood in him. That was how he saved the man because the people were not welcoming to the Americans. They saw them as the people enslaving their people. Understand it. Read it again very well. Find the material and study it yourself too. And he goes further to say, and no further questions was asked. He was received and welcomed. For the Africans, simple as we think them, distinguish things that differ. Remember at that time, everybody believed that the Negroes were not human. They know that the Americans are a slave holding, the English a slave liberating people. You see, whereas it is the English that knighted the slave captains, it is the English that captured the slaves. Remember the likes of John Hawkins, the captain of the slave ship Jesus. Remember John Newton, the captain of a slave ship and composer of the song Amazing Grace. Those were all British. But you see how the slave master was able to hide behind who was American and who was English that freed the people to sell the dummy of their religion to the Negroes. And further here, it says the slave trade for a time seemed to defy all opposition. Every newspaper teemed with accounts of its increase and many sneers were indulged in at that expensive philanthropy which sought in vain to stem its cause. But all this was needful. It was God's own way of answering these prayers of his people. So you see that they believe that the slave trade was a prayer answered. So please tell us. If someone came to your family, assuming you're listening to this, you have a family of, say, four children, and somebody came and killed you and your wife, and then took away your children, and tell you it's the will of God. Tell us how much sense that makes, and which God are we talking about here? Remember, both the Muslims and Christians did the same thing. So, that's why they keep telling you how Allah and God of Europe are all the same. We shall look at that in a subsequent video. And it goes further to say, Had the slave trade been less rampant or less successful, the prospects of Africa would not have been so bright today. Remember, we were told that there were inalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Now, they came to destroy the Negro's own happiness in his own home. And they still turn around to tell you that their religions of Christianity or Islam could have been true or divinely inspired, which is impossible going by their antecedents. And further down here it says, And as God's providence opens the way that Christian phalanx shall go forth to open the eyes of their countrymen to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Now we ask you, who is the Satan here? Somebody who comes to kill your siblings, kill your children, steal those he can, turns around to tell you that he was doing it for God. Which God? Again, we ask you. Can you tell us who between the victim and the person that murdered them is actually doing the will of the creator of heaven and earth? Remember, for every action of the slave master and his slave hunting partners, they find a way to justify them. If they killed Negroes, they will tell you why they should kill those Negroes. If they did anything, they will find a justification. And unfortunately, some Negroes buy into their narratives. But the providence of God had wrought for us in a wonderful manner. He has permitted the slave trade to exist till it has called moral influences into play. He is now causing it to cease to give these influences room to develop themselves. Remember, the slave trade never ceased. They just remodeled it. But you see how they found justification for it. And above all, they ended up selling the dummy that it was the Negroes selling themselves. It was not a sale. Ask yourself, how can somebody who doesn't speak your language walk in and suddenly get 400 men, women and children in a slave ship? They tell you it could have been done by the chiefs without an army. If you capture 10 people, only 10, we're not talking of 50, 10, 
they will mob you they will kill you why we are showing you that the negroes didn't like the slave trade is so you can understand that they lied but because you believe things without verification that's why and above all the slave master understands that if he can get somebody that looks like the negroes to lie for him the voice may be that of jacobs but the body is that of Esau. the serpent is the one speaking but the devil is hiding behind him so that's why you will see a video at the end of this part showing you some of those instances where they use their slave hunting partners against the negroes and so you see them telling us here that he is now causing it to cease to give these influences room to develop themselves tomorrow you will see how they will tell us that it was the negroes killing themselves in biafra and in ambazonia whereas it is the british and their slave hunting partners the fulanese that are behind it you don't need to believe us you will see how they will play the game and this let me remark is always god's way he avails himself of evil take note of this that is the god of the slave master not the creator of heaven and earth is the slave master's deity we are talking about here while we mentioned to you about the shriners and the messons in the declaration of independence is for you to remember that they had their own ways in pursuit of happiness that they did not destroy but it came to destroy the negro's way of life destroy his own pursuit of happiness destroyed everything about him and they have continued to do the same till today but our interest is to expose the lies it's incumbent upon you to now apply your common sense to whatever you hear you don't need to believe us we don't look for believers here we look for those who can actually reason and so again he says he avails himself of evil and then lays upon it his hand of restraint the business of the traitor apostle was made the instrument of the world's salvation the miserable judas was then sent to his own place now we ask you why then do they not celebrate judas if that was the case whereas if you looked at the code if you have been able to decode what was coded there you will see that the negro is his own greatest enemy he will help you betray his brother and will only realize himself after the damage has been done remember if judas had the intention to have jesus killed he had no reason to go commit suicide but because the negro had a short memory for sorrows lacked foresight according to the slave master he could betray his brother and then go and commit suicide after all if you looked at nam the canoe for example you will see the number of people that have gathered against him and now you ask yourself why will a sensible person be against his brother for speaking up against evil that was the same thing that happened during the slave trade if you go to ambazonia you will see the same thing you will see a group that the slave master will be using because of their experience in the slave trade that's why they are able to get those people if you look at biafra you will see the same group as well even when they are educated you will ask how somebody will take sides with a foreigner with an european an arab a baba or a tuareg against his own brother whatever the case may be whereas you can't see the fulanese doing the same thing to themselves what does that tell you it has been so in the case before us that unhallowed traffic having served the purposes of the god of mercy has been gradually narrowed in its sphere and is now almost utterly extinguished but then the same traffic they turned on its head to claim that it was the negro selling themselves that's why you see that today they blame the victim if you notice when they kill somebody for asking for freedom they blame the person that asked for freedom if you check it in biafra and in ambazonia you see what we're talking about so today when you see them all against biafra and ambazonia remember those areas were all the same people in the past and we can easily see here it says to estimate aright the squadron's repressive influence we must contemplate the slave trade in two aspects its extent of coast and the number of its victims the whole extent of coast over which as shown by parliamentary returns the slave trade was wont to range was about 3000 miles this is what they are telling you could have been covered by about 20 men old men that were priests of Arochuku because the slave master is a subtle beast and a liar that's why they could sell that line because they control the curriculum in the schools 
So they start teaching the children from childhood that it was their parents that could have sold themselves. You see how smart the slave master plays. But he goes further here to say, it extended from Cape Verde in 15 degrees north latitude to 20 degrees south latitude beyond Loando. But by the persevering efforts of our squadron, there is now a blessed change. The trade north of the line is confined to 200 miles in the Bight of Benin where there are three slave factories while eight or nine points in the congo country south of the line where slaves are collected and from which they are shipped are the only other remnants of this once mighty traffic but that's what they are telling you it could have been done by a bunch of priests in Arochiko, which we all know now is a lie because the religion of the Negroes forbid bloodshed, forbid man stealing. Remember, they were able to sell their books because they wrote part of what the Negroes were doing in those books, which we shall look at in a subsequent video. Our interest is for you to see how smart the slave master is and see where he is going in Biafra and in Ambazonia today. At least we have been able to predict him accurately because we understand this history. We have taken time to study the history. You haven't studied it yourself. But if you could study it beyond what you are taught in class, you will understand what we are saying. And it goes further here to say, More than 2,000 miles of sea coast, says Mr. Lewton Wilson, and that forming the best and fairest portion of the African continent have been relieved from this unparalleled scourge. We have driven it from the Sheboro country, from the Galenas, from the Gold Coast, from the Bight of Biafra, and from many points to the south. Now remember, today you hear them telling you how it could have been Ojuku that coined Biafra in 1967. Never forget the fact that the BBC is working for the slave master. Don't forget that fact. So whatever you hear from them must be against the Negroes. Believe it or not, that was why we asked you at the beginning. Why do you think the BBC goes to interview those who were veterans of the Biafran War? But how many of the veterans of the war in the north, in the Fulani enclave, or veterans of the slave trade, have you seen the BBC gone to interview? Now, imagine if it was Jonathan that the rumored had died the same way Buhari had obviously died. Will the BBC not be sleeping in Nassau Rock to unmask whoever is hiding there? That's why you see they work together the same way they were as slave hunters. And you see here it says in 1830, says one parliamentary witness, I counted 17 slavers in the river Bonnie. In that river there is now no slave trade. In September 1835, says another, there were lying in the harbor of Loando 18 slaving vessels. The slave trade is now almost wholly discontinued there. But our interest is for you to see how smart and how subtle the slave master is. He controls the narrative. And unfortunately, his slave hunting partners, they don't write books. Their own duty is to kill people. So that's why you notice that in a place like Nigeria and in Cameroon, in Biafra and in Ambazonia, just saying you want freedom gets you killed. Ask yourself if there was nothing there, if there was no yoke, why should talking about freedom be a crime? That was the same thing they did during the slave trade. We'll see a little bit of it in this video. And so here you see that it says, But me thinks the spot in Central Africa where our missionary bands shall meet will be yet more deserving of memorial. It will be a better meeting, the pledge of more blessed and more enduring results, even of Ethiopia stretching out her hands to God. Remember, the Negro used to be called Ethiopia before. That's why you have the Ethiopian eunuch. Remember, a eunuch is a castrated man. They used to castrate a lot of Negroes, which they do to today. If you check in the north, the Fulanese still do it till tomorrow morning. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research. Put it in the comment section that you conducted a research and the outcome is different from what we just told you. So they changed the Negroes from being called Ethiopians to Negroes. You might be surprised. The only reason they are sponsoring the likes of the Nkalowe and the Aborigine narrative is to remove the African there because they think the African is somehow uniting the Negroes. That's what they are afraid of. Don't be deceived. Remember, they changed from Afro-Americans to Black Americans, then to African Americans in 1988. But apparently, 
they are seeing signs of a possible synergy and unity between those they captured back then or the descendants of the slaves and the so-called Negroes in Africa. Of course, the slave hunters of old still hate the Negroes. If you doubt what we're saying, if you're a so-called African-American, come to Nigeria and stay and see if they can differentiate you from the Negroes when they want to strike. So you see here that it says, but we had a third difficulty, the accursed slave trade, which we were utterly unable to overcome. It closed Africa against us and that in more ways than one. It debased the native population. How could we ply a people with either the doctrines or precepts of the faith of Christ who were accustomed to make merchandise of each other, nay, to sell their own children for trifles or the means of sensual indulgence? Now, if you read this, you will think it was the Africans selling themselves. Remember, they already told us here that it closed the door against them. But you see how they made it look like if you read this, and you don't read between the lines and you don't pay attention to details you will think it means the africans were selling themselves but let's read further down and it says it kept the aborigines in a state of constant excitement and warfare it is only by international wars and the consequent capture of prisoners that the slave market is replenished and the slave dealers therefore makes it his object to excite them that he may promote his unhallowed traffic. Remember, like the wars you see in that region is usually triggered by the slave master and his slave hunting partners, which is partly what you're seeing in Biafra and in Ambazonia today. The only challenge they're having is that information flow has increased. People now know who the Fulanese are. So it's no longer easy to get people except the foolish ones that have been conditioned that way to start killing their siblings. Remember the title of this video is The Negro's Greatest Enemy. And without the enemy within, the enemies outside could never harm them. Again, you see what the same people that tried to make it look like it was a cell is clearly giving the game away. And he says, if we attempted to preach Jesus to the black man, he had his answer ready. Who fired my native village, he asked us. Who slaughtered my innocent babes. Who murdered my aged father and mother and sold my wife into captivity. Was it not a white man that did all these things? Was it not a white man from whose cruel hands I myself with difficulty escaped? And now, when white man has made me desolate, does he come to tell me of righteousness and truth? To bid me cast away my gods and follow his. Nay, physician, heal thyself. Thyself practice righteousness and mercy, and then call on me to follow thee. It was thus that in a variety of ways the slave trade shot Africa against us. So you see who was behind the shooting. This gives the game away right here, which is expected. You can't be following somebody who came and murdered your siblings and then come back to give you a god. A God that cannot protect you. Now we ask you, if you are one of those that said, if the Negroes had a true relationship with the Almighty, how come they were captured? Is this still the same you that is saying they were also sold? So which one is correct? Was it a sell or a capture? Now, if we leave that apart, the question becomes, this response gives it clearly for what it was. It was a capture. Because that's why they rejected their religions. But persistence... Remember, the slave master is very resilient and determined too. That was why it was difficult to stop the slave trade. The moment the slave trade ended supposedly in the New World, he came to Sub-Saharan Africa, to West and Central Africa as colonialists because that was the extension of the slave trade. And that's what you're seeing today. We read the Declaration of Independence to show you exactly what Biafra is all about, what Ambazonia is all about, and ask yourself, why is the British sponsoring the Fulanese to keep Nigeria won? That's one question we want you to seek answers for. You don't need to believe us, but you'll see where they're headed to in a short while. And so here we see that it says, it was thus that in a variety of ways, the slave trade shot Africa against us. Besides debasing the black man, it increased an hundredfold the animosity with which he regarded the white, it kindled in his bosom as the fruit of mortal injury. 
a spirit of undying resentment so that Christian love and mercy sought to approach him in vain. But you see, the moment he succeeded in selling the golden calf of Christianity and Islam, he has gone to start saying, oh, the Negroes are now aborigines of the United States. That's why you see the likes of them being sponsored, the likes of Kremu Ahau. They know what they are doing. Those things are lies. They know it's a lie, but they understand that the Negro listens and obeys and believes whatever he hears. Faith cometh by hearing. So they will continue saying it. That's what they will keep doing. Let us also reference narrative of the life of Moses Grandi, formerly a slave in the United States of America. And this was published 1844. And here we see that slaves are under fear in every word they speak. 